Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready to branch out, to take a leap of faith, to love yourself and others fully? Then let go of whatever no longer serves you to take action now on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, and letting it go. Erica will energize and excite you to power up your passionate dream that sets your soul on fire. With Erica's E3 approach, equipping, empowering, and enlightening yourself so you can be yourself for yourself. Get ready and get rooted to live a life without regrets, without what ifs, without should haves, and especially without empty feelings from a life unexplored. This hit show helps you build powerful and intentional roots to live it up, love it up, and let it go. Get fearlessly ready and powerfully rooted in your yes with your host, Erica Gifford Mills, and be fearless about your more and stand in your yes. Now on Get Rooted Radio. Welcome, everyone. I am Erica Gifford Mills, and you are listening to Get Rooted Radio, living it up, loving it up, letting it go right here on Transformation Talk Radio. A big shout out, as always, to our producer, David. Hey, David. Hey, Erica. How are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. Getting ready for Christmas and all the holidays. Yep. Getting ready to spend it with the media family. So Wonderful. That's always, that's always a lot of fun. And I know it's so different right now, but I think if we can all remember, you know, the reason for the season and keep ourselves um, grateful for all those things that we have, it will work out in everybody's favor. So one thing, David, our show today is about rediscovering your values and bringing them to life. And I have a question kind of relating to that for you. How would you define success? Um, Success, being happy when there's no kind of reason to be. Um, I've had that experience when you just wake up and you just feel grateful about life. And that's where I feel the most successful because I know that everything's in line in my life. Um, Money, what money is not an issue you know, drama is not an issue. You're just happy where you're at at the moment. I love that answer. You, you have it better than so many people. That <laughs> is such such a perfect answer, and, and it helps because you're probably living within your values. And I think that's one of the problems for many of us um, is the definition of success. And it's by, you know, what others tell us it means. Maybe it's that fancy car, that big job title, or loads of money. And my guest today, Julia Amato, and I will be discussing how one can challenge these norms and dig deeper, you know, really looking at what do you truly value most and how can you bring more of those values into your life? And with that, I'd like to introduce my guest, Julia Amato, who's a life and leadership coach based in Portland, Oregon. She focuses on helping people discover or rediscover their values so they can live their truest, most beautiful version of life and become more self-aware, empowered leaders. So welcome, Julia. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Erica. Thank you for having me. Not a problem at all. So, Julia, we have a lot of, lot in common. I mean, the, I think one of the big things is we're both Midwest girls. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. I love I love a fellow Midwesterner. <laughs> yes. You know, it's, it's, um, I saw actually a shirt in the village I live in. It says it's not a party to a mid- until a Midwest girl arrives and oh. couldn't, couldn't be <laughs> farther from the truth, right? It's- <laughs> yeah, I think I need that shirt. <laughs> that sounds like a great shirt. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your professional background. Yeah, yeah. So I will, I will start back in college. So I, I studied journalism and biology uh, at, when I went to, to the Eastern Illinois University. So as Erica said, I'm a Midwestern girl at heart, grew up in Illinois and um, did journalism for a few years for a short time before I entered into um, the environmental sector. I worked for both um, government, local government, and have since been with the Nature Conservancy, um, the world's largest environmental nonprofit for the last decade. Um, and really kind of tapping into that biology side of uh, my, my schooling and um, brought my journalist, journalism skills to life through, through marketing. So I've always been in communications, marketing um, for the environmental nonprofit. And like I said, I've been doing that for the last 15 years. And um, 
I promise it's related to coaching, <laughs> life and leadership <laughs> coaching. Um, I, so at the start of this pandemic, so early in 2020, earlier this year, um, I really felt a call into coaching. I, I've always been someone who um, listens really deeply. I, I think you have to be when you're a journalist or else you don't get the story. Um, but it, not only just listening, but just a real true desire to um, to help people to serve others. And, you know, when we were all just sort of grappling with the world <laughs> and um, the state of things, I just, I felt like I needed to do something else and do something more. And um, kind of a random twist of events happened. I was contacted by someone on LinkedIn and um, I started just exploring what coaching was. And, and as soon as I learned more about you know, what, what is coaching? And I found a program um, that worked with me and my schedule uh, through the Academy of Creative Coaching. And uh, I found that in August and I've been coaching part-time since August. So, so now I do life and leadership coaching on the side and I still work full-time as a, as a marketing professional with the Nature Conservancy. I think that, you know, I love that because, you know, I do a lot of coaching. Um, It's not my primary source of income currently, but that is something I actually enjoy because I see when you're working um, in, whether it's a company, corporation, government, um, nonprofit organization, you see what people struggle with. And I think that, as you said, when you are able to listen, not only to their words, but to their tone, to their body language, you can see where their struggles are. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to know more, really, how does your work in conservation overlap with your coaching? Yeah, that's a a really great question. So, So as I said, you know, I think just personally, my skill set, I think having those, um, those listening skills and communication skills have really served me well, just, you know, in my career, but then also as a coach, but I might just actually back up a little bit and, and describe kind of what I was getting, um, from the environmental sector, you know, after being in it for 15 years, um, and then how that connects to coaching. But I, you know, year after year, I would hear about, you know, how more and more people, especially kids, are losing their connection to nature. Um, People aren't getting outside as much. Uh, Kids are connected to screens and devices. Adults are too busy. Everyone's too busy. And, um, you know, there's just that lack of connection. And so there's been all sorts of different, um, you know, different movements to try and connect people, reconnect people with nature. And that, you know, that from day one, it, as soon as I got into the environmental sector 15 years ago, that's been a real key issue. Um, and then just in these past few years, um, there's more and more research coming out around um, a surge in climate anxiety. So, you know, people are really, truly fearing their lives because of climate change and making life decisions of whether they get married, whether they have kids and, you know, some of these things, maybe they just aren't interested in them regardless. But I think um, the anxiety of climate change has really heightened that and made people question whether that's something they want to do. So, so there's that going on (laughs) in the, in the environmental sector. Um, And I think it's really connected to, um, to coaching because the root of those issues, I believe, are it's the fact that we're we're disconnected from ourselves and um, we aren't taking time for self care and you know self love and we're just we're sort of going through the motions of life. Um, you know we're busy and kind of the default is to grab our phones or you know get in front of a screen and and so you 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 make decisions that it put you in this kind of autopilot mode and, you know, we lose connection with ourself when we do that. And I think that lost connection with ourself is, has also led to, you know, a disconnection from nature. So I really, that's my philosophy. I think until we can reconnect, reconnect with both, um, you know, we won't make decisions as a species. We won't make decisions that serve both, you know, our individual lives and then also our collective health, um, of our planet and, and ourselves together. So, 
I you know, could not, of- yeah, I couldn't agree more with that because it is, it, uh, we've lost a generation of, of kids that will get up in the morning, you know, eat your breakfast, say hi to mom and dad or siblings, and then run out the door and get back home when it's dark out, right? When the street lights come on or yeah. when it start, the sun's starting to set. And it's that disconnect with, with nature, with being um, truly connected mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, because everything is interconnected and, and intertwined. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's easy to make decisions in one area of our life, but to have to say that that those decisions don't affect the other areas is, you know, it would be really hard to have that not affect other areas. So I just, I, I totally agree. Everything's connected. And the more we can, the more we can, you know, reinvigorate that relationship with the outdoors and nature, I think, you know, we'll find a little bit more of ourselves in that too. I completely agree. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk rediscovering your values. And Julia is going to put me through a little quiz. But (laughs) before we go, Julia, tell listeners how they can reach you. Yeah, so you can find me um, um, a few different ways. So I have a website. It's just julia-amato.com. You can learn a little bit about me and my services. You can also find me on Instagram. Um, I have my personal, if you want to just get to know me as Julia, my personal account is Graceful Jewels. And uh, I also have a, a more coaching professional account called Community. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Julia. You're listening to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you ready to branch out? Take a leap of faith. Tune in to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills on TransformationTalkRadio.com to equip, empower, and enlighten yourself. Erica will energize and excite you to power up your passionate dream that sets your soul on fire. So get fearlessly ready and get powerfully rooted in your yes to live it up, love it up, and let it go. Visit GetRootedRadio.com. How do you feel? Just okay? Well, how about you tune in and get ready to be more with the healing hour with me doc martin every third wednesday at 11 a.m pacific on transformationtalkradio.com i'm ready for your questions and i can't wait to help you find the answers every month we'll have a new live call-in show with innovative topics and a powerful hour of healing to learn more about me visit drsharonmartin.com see you there i'm going to be here you won't want to miss your kindness been used against you Are you ready to clear the confusion and reconnect with your power? Then it's time to become Toxic Person Proof. Join Toxic Relationship Specialist Sarah K. Ramsey as she gives you the secrets to rebuilding and rebranding your life after a toxic person encounter. It's time to get past the past, get real about the present, and get serious about your future. For more information, visit sarahkramsey.com. What we've been taught and told is not all there is. Life is all about energy, and the energy you feel is real. Tune into the energy paradigm each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com with Dr. Vic. The energy paradigm is an eye-opening, mind-shifting, transformative, and earth-shattering way to live, work, and do business that will enable you to unlock your magic every day. Visit TheEnergyParadigm.com. It is time to get real and wake up. Join Mike Murphy Live Monday through Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get Real with Mike Murphy cuts through the noise of mainstream media, bringing you unfiltered truth and solutions. For more information on Mike and his work, visit his website at MikeMurphyUnfiltered.com. Are you meeting your sales goals? Or maybe your business plan could use a dose of the divine. Tune in to Divinely Driven Results with faith-based business coach Elise Smith on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Coach Elise Smith helps listeners get unstuck from their business plateau and become empowered through divine guidance build up belief in yourself and your dreams and learn business strategies that work for you for real lasting results learn more by visiting www.divinelydrivenresults.com
Welcome back to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. If you missed any portion of today's episode, you can catch it on GetRootedRadio.com. That's GetRootedRadio.com. Don't forget to subscribe online to receive the latest news, events, and specials, and words of encouragement. Go to GetRootedRadio.com. I'd like to welcome back Julia Almato, and we are talking about rediscovering your values and bringing them to life. Welcome back, Julia. Hi. So many people talk about personal values, but we don't often stop to think what this means and why it matters. Um, You know, values are the things, concepts, and ideas we consider to be good, important, and valuable in making our lives better. Our personal values can be things like honesty or friendship, success, modesty, reliability, the list goes on and on. And it's very individualized. It's very specific to the person. You know, thinking about and having a basic understanding of what matters to you is truly a valuable exercise. It is helpful throughout your life to really periodically reflect on the things that are important to you. And doing this will help you make thoughtful decisions about your life, both in specific um, instances, circumstances, and really for a larger and longer term life decisions. So with that, Julia, you mentioned helping people reconnect with themselves. How do you do that? Yeah, they, I, I, you know, I think your your intro to values was a, a really, really great one, Erica. I, I believe that's honestly one of the first steps you can take in reconnecting with yourself is really, truly taking stock of those values. You know, what is it that you care about most and you, you value most? Um, how are you living them? If you're not living them, how does that, how can that change? And, you know, I, I think it's, it's important to take stock of your values, as you mentioned, because so many of us are living a life um, that we're told to live or we're conditioned to live. We define success by, you know, uh, uh, that fancy car, the high paying job, or, you know, any other kind of stereotypical um, definition of success. And same thing with a good life, you know, I'm going to get married, I'm going to have kids, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And, you know, that's, I think, a very traditional way of thinking. And that might be a right value for someone or a right definition for someone, but it might not be the right one for another person. So I always encourage people to to stop and think about what what does success truly mean to you? And, you, you know, you might find out that your values are a little bit different than, you know, maybe your parents or societies at large. So I think, um, I think taking stock of those values and taking stock of them regularly, because as we grow, I think our values grow and change as well. So it's, you know, it's really, really important to, um, to take stock and, and check in on them. And I actually, I do a little exercise with all of my clients to kind of start us off on, you know, what defining their values and, and what they are, um, what they, you know, what those values mean to them. And if you're up for it, Erica, I'd like to do the exercise live with you. (laughs) Certainly. Let's go for it. Awesome. All right. So it's, it's actually, it's fun. (laughs) I hope you're excited. (laughs) Um, I, and this, you know, it's a great time of year to do this because it's, um, it helps you think about, you know, you mentioned having gratitude earlier. It helps you think about all the people in your life that, that you admire. So um, the first step is to name uh, or write down, however you want to do it, five people that you really look up to, the folks that you really love and admire. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tell them because if I just write them down, nobody will know what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I would say um, my mom and my dad, my parents. Um, so that's two. My son, and let's some, some more common figures. Um, Eleanor Roosevelt and Mother Teresa. Awesome. Wow, those are great. I love how you chose, you know, your immediate and then also just two really iconic figures. <laughs> That's really great. Um, okay, so the next step in, um, if you did write those down, the next step is um, next to each person's name, write, three to four reasons why you really admire them? Um, My mother, I would say her unconditional love and support, Um, her compassion, uh, her ability to see the best in others, and um, her sass, (laughs) really, (laughs) her her, her sassiness, her outspokenness. I love it. 
Um, my dad, I would say his dedication, his determination, his work ethic, um, probably with determination and dedication also goes as, you know, straightforwardness, his no nonsense. Um, and I would also say his faith. That's great. And what about your son? Oh, what is, do I not love about my son? Oh, that's going to be a little harder one. Um, his empathy. He is very empathetic. Um, his adventure and an individuality, um, his loyalty and just his love, his passion. That's great. Well, good job, Mama. <laughs> he sounds like you <laughs> raised a good son there. Well, I'm very biased, so I don't think there's I don't think there's a day or a show that I don't mention my son. Oh. So it, it's it's I'm one of those moms. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. It's good to be proud of your kiddos. Um, awesome. And then you had Eleanor Roosevelt, right? Was your um, next yes, one? Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, her advocacy and her her passion for equality. And again, her outspokenness in a time where maybe a lot of women or first ladies didn't play an active role. I think that for her. That's awesome. Yeah. Kudos to all the women who came yes. before us and paved the way, right? Yes, definitely. Uh, um, and then your last one was Mother Teresa. Um, her compassion, her faith, her dedication, um, I would think would be the top three. That's great. Awesome. So thank you for doing that. And um, the next step, this might be a little bit harder. So you've listed, you know, a handful of words that uh, really um, are the reasons why that you truly value and love, love those people. And if you look at those words um, next to each person's name, try to um, underline or write down just one word from each person's name. Um, or, you know, if you're looking at the collective whole, try to choose five that really jump out at you. Okay. Well, I say compassion and empathy, although they're different, they're some, somewhat similar. So I'd say compassion and empathy, um, dedication, uh, <laughs> maybe a combination of the out, outspokenness, sass, and adventurous. <laughs> um <laughs> And one that jumps out to me that that I think will be one that I need work on is faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say I heard um, I heard faith and empathy, compassion, love. Um, those came out a few yeah. a few different times. So that's good. That's great. Okay, so um, one one more step <laughs> in in thinking about other people before we apply these to yourself. Um, if you look at those words, so I have compassion, empathy, dedication, sass. I just like sass, so I chose, I think you said <laughs> sass, adventurous, so I chose sass. And then faith. Um, in order to put action behind those, those you know, adjectives, um, I like to walk people through an exercise where it's a fill in the blank. So it's the name embodies the value. So... Um, my mom embodies compassion by, and what does she do that, that embodies compassion that really okay. brings that value to life? So I would say my mom embodies compassion by always having an open door policy, meaning um, at, at home, no questions asked, and her volunteerism. Love that. Awesome a good mom to have. <laughs> yes, she, she was, she was wonderful. I mean, literally our door was never locked. There was always people not, and they weren't re- always relatives that were just there. <laughs> yeah. And what about your next one? Empathy. Empathy. I would say, uh, my son embodies empathy by his ability to listen, mm-hmm. um, and really listen, not to respond, but listen, but listen to hear what is being said. Absolutely. I love that. And dedication. My dad, my dad embodies dedication by how he supports his family um, and and dedicated to continuing learning. So he, he went back to school to university at like, gosh, I want to say he was almost 70 
um, to the University of Wisconsin because he had owned his bis- own business for, at that point, what, about 40 years. And he wanted to make sure that he was up to date on all the latest techniques and he was continuing to learn. That is amazing. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. You- um, and SAS. SAS, what's your next one? SAS. Oh, um, I could tell you tons of stories about my mom on that one, but um, <laughs> I'll go with with Eleanor Roosevelt because the SAS, the adventureness, the outspokenness, I'd say um, Eleanor Roosevelt embodied SAS by her really tireless and selfless actions to promote um, equality in her, her work, her, her advocacy work. Yeah. Yeah, I think it takes a lot of sass to, to be an advocate and an, yeah. a leader in advocacy like Eleanor Roosevelt was. That's, that's awesome. And then your last one was faith. Mother Teresa embodies faith by her all her actions, about her, her love and support to not only God, but to all others really less fortunate than her and showing that way and paving that way through everything she did. Yeah. 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 What an icon. <laughs> that's, yeah. I have to say that's, that is, she's like such an icon that uh, of all the people I've done this with, she's the, you're the first one to bring her up as. Really? I should say what Saint, Saint Mother Teresa. Cause yeah. now she's yeah. a saint. So yes, forgive me right. for, for those in the Catholic <laughs> faith that I might have gotten it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So um, you might be wondering, you know, you're talking about my values. Why in the world are we talking about these other people that I look up to? And there's actually, there's some psychology behind that. So Dr. Stephen Hayes is, um, he's the founder of acceptance and commitment therapy and, um, suggests that, you know, when you uncover, you, you tend to uncover your values by naming your heroes. So we often, you know, we, it's really easy to actually look at the people around us and be like, oh, wow, I love them. They're so good at this and they're so this, and this is how they bring this thing to life. And, but when we do that for ourselves, I think we have these inner critics that tend to, to block us. Right. And so I love this exercise because it forces us to think of other people and then how they bring those lives, those, their, those values to life. And, Um, And then the next step in the exercise is really, you know, when you look at this last part where you said, you know, my mom embodies X by X by doing X, um, you really sit down and you think, you know, where, where in my life am I living that value? Am I doing this thing that I said I admired in someone else? And, you know, where do you need more alignment? Where are you doing well? Where do you need more alignment? And so, um, it, you know, you feel free to answer that question now if you yeah. want, but <laughs> no, and I think that is great. I, and I love that because it, it is, it makes you think. And, um, when I was saying these and I, I kind of inferred it earlier is, is one thing where I don't know that I am living in, in alignment or I think I know I'm not, um, I'm slowly getting there is, is really faith is, you know, there's always, I think, a point in time where many of us question our faith. You know, sometimes can you just, I'm a questions person. Mm -hmm. I ask a lot of questions, which sounds like sometimes I'm defensive or I'm, um, it's a, you know, nature of the beast. But I think it's having that ability to believe and to let go unconditionally. And I think that's where I'm, I'm growing in my faith. Um, I was always amazed at my father. I mean, he passed away seven years ago um, and he was an acolyte up until the time he passed away. And he was well, a couple of weeks shy of 82. And he was an acolyte since he was um, in his early, early preteens. So he was an acolyte for 70 plus years. And just his ability and his his love for the church. I mean, every morning he got up at 3.30 in the morning so he could read his Bible, so he could do exercises, so he could make his breakfast and before he got out to work. So I think for me, that's a place where I can use alignment. I can, I can learn and put into action um, 
more steps to get there. Um, the other areas, I think I'm, I'm doing pretty well, you know, empathy and compassion. And I am definitely am called upon. Um, I, I don't like when I see injustices. I, I would be a great person on, you know, what would you do show? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I'd be that person who would be like, why are you doing that? Why are you saying that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and, you know, I love to volunteer, whether it's giving um, time, uh, money, donations, whatever it might be. I, I think that's that's very high on my list of priorities. Um, I'm dedicated. I am very much dedicated to, to everything I, I do, my work personally, um, professionally. And um, I, I'm very sassy. I'm very adventurous. Um, <laughs> I when I, you know, this, this uh, pandemic, I think, has been hard on me because I like to try new things. And I've had now more time because of, you know, not, not doing athletic coaching. And it's, it's like, oh, I have more time. I could go try that. Oh, no, I can't go try that because nothing's open. (laughs) So um, those things I I do truly believe in, you know, standing up for others and um, having the compassion and empathy to truly listen. Um, There are times where I, I am not always listening, but that's, you know, patience is a virtue and it's something that I work on. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But it's a great exercise. I I truly like this because it it does show, show what you, what you look into others for is something that you might be lacking or what you really love in yourself. And I think that's where also when you get frustrated with somebody for doing something, sometimes it's more of a reflection on you. Um, meaning like I would always get so frustrated when my son would procrastinate and it's because I am a procrastinator at times and I never wanted to instill that in him. So I would get more frustrated that, oh my gosh, don't do that. Don't learn that from me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Gosh, that's so true. (laughs) Our kids are such uh, reflections, (laughs) such Mm -hmm. mirrors of us. Yeah. No, and I, I, I'm glad you like the exercise. This is that's great. It's great to hear. And I, I do too. I think it's. I, I actually learned this through doing some of the, you know, mindfulness and self awareness trainings and things that I've done throughout my career. And I just, I love it. Like I said, because it helps you acknowledge the people around you that have taught you so much. But um, I also just think it's, it helps you reevaluate. And so you know, you brought up faith as an area where you think you need some more alignment. And what I would do, you know, I do this with my coaching clients and I would say, okay, so let's talk about that. Like, what does, what does faith mean to you? What is it, you know, why is it important? How does it show up? What is it, you know, what is it that you're looking for in your faith? And, and then really kind of unpack, um, you know, how, how you can bring more faith um, as you define it into these different areas of your life. And it's really kind of unpacking that and truly making a plan um, to, to bring that value to life. So, um, so yeah, I, I think it's, it, no one's perfect. No one's going to be in alignment <laughs> all the time with all things, but it's great that you're, you've got four out of five that you're feeling pretty good about. Yes. And you know, it, it, it's always right. Practice and consistency and, and following through. I mean, that's, that's one thing that we all need to work on. And, and it's great because, you know, that is something that I will start probably thinking much more about on, you know, and it's, it's to me, you know, personally faith is also spiritual, spirituality. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's what, what are you becoming one with, whether it's um, getting out in nature more, as we discussed earlier, and that can be a very, very spiritual um, event. And I think um, those sort of actions are very individualistic, right? They're very yeah. personal. And I mean, that's why they're called personal values. Yeah, but absolutely. I, I love this exercise. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to discuss values and authentic living. But, but Julia, before we go, tell people how they can reach out to, um, to learn about your coaching and, and learn more on how to take this exercise. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you can find more about me on my website. I'm at julia-amato.com. And um, you can actually find links to the exercise there. You can find links um, to the exercise on my Instagram account. So I have two. My personal is um, Graceful Jewels. That's 
graceful and J U L E S. And then my coaching one is whole self dot whole community. And there's links to the values exercise there. You can also shoot me an email. <laughs> That's a, it's an easy way to get in contact and it's coach at Julia Amato.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Julia. I'm Erica Gifford Mills, and you are listening to Get Rooted Radio, living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting edge, high vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving, even in the face of adversity. Say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within join the planet the lucid planet visit the lucidplanet.com welcome home stuck in a roundabout of dysfunction learn how to speak your truth to power with host dr kathy obear create real change with smart tools and smart strategies no frills no fluff just life-changing conversations to help get you where you want to be extend your reach and become an agent for real change with kathy obear for more information on Kathy and her work, please visit drkathyobear.com. That's drkathyobear.com. Did you know that when we talk about the Earth's ecosystems, the most important ecosystem has been left out? You, we created the ecosystem approach to recapture human potential. Find us at theecosystemapproach.org. Join us every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Time for the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason and Patricia on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Heaven on Earth, your online school of divinity, building your inner coach as you lay down your foundation in the new earth with you as the authority. Take action now. The number one challenge people face every day is the negative voice in their head. We work each day to turn negatives into positives. It's all a matter of perception. Our challenge at this time is to remain intensely positive and focused, creating the world we wish to live in. Wake up on purpose with Cornelia's daily online positive messages guiding us in the new paradigm. Raise yourself into happiness and inner peace daily. Elevate your personal frequency, free from negativity, and reprogram yourself step by step, shifting your energy patterns with positive repetition, daily building your new earth with someone you trust. All the heavy lifting has been done for you. Wake up happy with Cornelia Stephanie VIP.com. Try free for seven days now. We're back on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills, living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Don't forget to visit GetRootedRadio.com to listen to a replay of this episode or other episodes, sign up for helpful tips, and learn about upcoming events. That's GetRootedRadio.com. Welcoming back to um, our guest, Julia Amato. Julia, you mentioned during break, you forgot to ask me one final question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> I, uh, I forgot to leave you with an action step. So the final part of the values exercise is, um, you know, meant to just kind of put at least one of your values into action. So I always ask people, um, what is one thing you can do in the next 24 hours that brings, you said faith, so brings faith, more faith to your life? Um, and I think uh, it would be, Getting back out to nature, and I, 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 not just saying that because you're in conservation, <laughs> but I, you know, I feel so much better after I've taken a walk along the lakefront or am by water or in the woods. And um, lately with the new puppy, um, I have been just doing more street or paved paths until he gets kind of used to it. And I feel that not being kind of 
you know, quote unquote, one with nature, I'm not getting that time to really think, to breathe um, and appreciate everything around me. And I feel like that's something, you know, get back out onto the wooded trails and um, be able to, to breathe in everything that was put here for our pleasure. Yeah, that's great. That is an awesome way to reconnect and bring that value to life. So I hope you can. I hope you can bundle up in those Wisconsin winters and get oh, outside yes. and enjoy it. Sometimes it's winter hikes are my favorite. Oh, that, I love it, especially after a fresh snowfall when oh, it's yeah. so quiet and it's mm-hmm. just, it's peaceful. Um, it's wonderful. So Again, if you are interested in taking this values exercise, it was very, very enlightening. Um, It's right on your website. Correct, Julia? Yes, it is. Yep. All right. So you can go to Julia's website and we will be able to see it right there. So um, one thing we want to get into is discussing how we live authentically through those values. And if you really think about it, each of us have been confronted with a decision, you know, a a situation or request that has called into question our inner compass or those core values. Whether it's, should I leave that job? Should I accept the job promotion? Should I start my own business? Should I follow tradition or pave my own path as we talked about earlier? You know, when most people struggle to achieve their life purpose you know, and lack that motivation to do so because they don't live their values. You know, in fact, most people don't even know their values. That was what was so great about doing this exercise. And one thing I have a question for you, Julie, is how do your values help you live authentically? Yeah, yeah, that's another great question, Erica. So, um I think I'm going to answer this question with a personal story, if you don't mind. I I like stories. And so I'm going to, I'm going to go that route. So um, the best, the best example of this, you know, because I think you can think of your values as like those big life moments, like you just described, but also um, in some of the day-to-day decisions as well. And so that's, that's the story that I'm going to share. So, you know, when I became a mother three years ago, um, I started to really question everything. Honestly, I had this, you know, little tiny human looking up at me and obviously not when she was a baby, she wasn't getting everything, but as she got older, she started to question why and watch me do my makeup, watch me do my hair. And, um, you know, I started to just really be mindful of how I was living, what I was feeding her, all the things, and really just started questioning um, why, why do I do this? Why do I feel like I need to, um, put on mascara? And, you know, after she was born, I was just dead set committed. I've been a marathon runner my whole life and a long distance runner my whole life. And I was dead set on, you know, training for another half marathon. And I could, I only was going to be fit if I could run a marathon within the first year after she was born. So I just, there's just all this, um, Uh, these preconceived kind of conditioned understandings of what it meant to be fit, what it meant to be put together, all this, that I just started um, questioning, you know, what, what was normal and and why was I feeling this way? And so um, her first birthday came (laughs) and I'm in this moment of questioning everything. And um, everyone started to ask, uh, you know, what, what does Lillian need and what can I buy her? And, um, you know, both my husband and I, um, we were, we struggled with answering because she did not need a single thing. And uh, both of us really value simplicity, um, and just, and, and really quality time with each other and, um, and, and over gifts. And so, uh, we leaned on those values. We actually, we said she's got, we were so grateful for all the gifts that she did get when she was born, but she's got more than she needs now. And, um, um, we leaned on this kind of value of simplicity and quality time and asked family to skip the presents and instead just, you know, join us at our house, come join us for a meal and we'll celebrate her. And, um, you know, that's how we want to celebrate. And it wasn't, it was, 
easy for me to lean on that and make that decision because that was such a, that was a value actually is a value my husband and I both share. So both of us were said, you know, no, we're, we value simplicity. It was, it was hard though, cause it wasn't received, um, you know, as openly, I guess, as I would imagined it would be because it's like, oh, this is my value. But other people show their love because they like to give gifts or through gift giving. And so, um, but I think, you know, when you have a value that you can lean on in life and, and really make those kind of everyday decisions or, you know, kind of seemingly, seemingly everyday decisions, um, then you're able to really set meaningful boundaries around things. And I think when you set meaningful boundaries, it helps you bring those values to life and, um, and helps you live, you know, more authentically. So, so that's my long winded story of answering, you know, how your values help you live, you help you live more authentically. But um, hopefully that, that story kind of brought it to life a little bit. (laughs) No. And I think it's, it's a great, it's, it's a great example, right? Because it's, it's your everyday, your day-to-day examples. And that's really how you live authentically is when you, you really put it in to play every day. And I think the mention of authenticity really reminds me of a quote, a quote by um, Carl Jung that goes, it's something like this. Uh, I might, I might get it wrong. So forgive me for those um, who are avid (laughs) followers of him. It's uh, the privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are. And I think the phrase authenticity is really kicked around a lot. You know, you live an authentic life, be authentic, but being authentic means coming from a real place within it's when, you know, our actions and words are congruent with our beliefs and values. Absolutely. You know, it's being ourselves, not an imitation of what we think we should be or have been told we should be as we discussed earlier, right? Is it a traditional method? And again, that's not saying that the traditional method is wrong or not right, but some people don't follow that. And there shouldn't really be any shoulds in authentic. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, no. And, and as I say, wouldn't you agree? This is why knowing our values and truly seeing and understanding if we are living by them is so important. Uh, yeah, I, I'm over here nodding my head. <laughs> no <laughs> one can see me, but I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, yeah. I, it, you can't, you really can't live authentically if you're not in touch with those values and, and able to confidently set boundaries and, and be able to stand by them. And I just, I think without your values, you can't do that. And so yes. it's, it's just like, you know, it's part of the process and the steps to, to living authentically. I, I completely agree. And it's being able, like you said, those boundaries, I am a big boundary person is learning how to set them and hold to them, even when other people don't agree with them, because it's not their boundary, it's yours. And you Absolutely. need to be able to effectively communicate what that is. Um, and yeah. I, I really think if we take time to reflect on what's important to us and what resonates with us, what is truly our belief is a step that we all have to take. And because I mean, if, if we don't, we start carrying around baggage that's not our own. It's baggage that keeps us from finding our authentic self. By really exposing ourselves to new ideas and different ways of being, we can discover what then resonates within us. Yeah. It's not easy. No, it's definitely <laughs> not easy, but it's, but it doesn't have to be so hard either. I think, I think to me, it's the, it is, it all comes back to that giving yourself <laughs> permission to give yourself time, <laughs> right? Yes. Like, and really invest in yourself and it's okay to put yourself first and to really have, make time for that self-discovery. And gosh, as a mom of a toddler, I get that, <laughs> like yeah. I get that it, I'm, oh no, I'm taking time for myself. I feel guilty. But if, if I didn't, if I didn't do that, then I don't think I would be a very good mom. So no, exactly. You want to show her it needs to be done. Yes, exactly. So rounding it all out, right? Putting it all together. We've talked about values and authenticity. You know, how does all of this come together in life? Yeah. So, you know, just like I mentioned, I think those, those values, um, help you live authentically because they help you set those boundaries. So I think that's, that's really, that's really one, one way to, um, to that it that knowing your values kind of brings this authenticity to life is is those boundaries 
Um, you know, I, I always say, um, saying no becomes easier and yes becomes exhilarating (laughs) because I do, I, and your, I think your program is like stand in your yes. And I just, I love that so much because I think when we, when we have our values and we have our boundaries, then, then, you know, we can say no and we can say no confidently and we can say yes, like very excitedly. So, um, Gosh, I, you know, just saying this out loud is really making me think about all the things I've said yes to, like reluctantly in my life, like in my Uh entire 20s, (laughs) just a lot of people pleasing happening there. So, oh, yeah. um, the other and once thing, you start doing that, you become resentful and you don't, oh, sometimes don't even know it. You don't even yeah. realize like you're ticked off at the person and you don't realize why. And it's because of something you did because you said yes to something you didn't really want to do. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's it. it what is the saying? Like if you're pointing a finger, there's always three pointing right back at you. Yes. Yep, <laughs> so, that, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I feel like that's, you know, if you can't. If you don't, if you are not saying, if you're saying yes to things that you don't really want to say yes to, then, then you've got to, you got to learn from that and say no next time and, and own that no. Um, but I was, yeah, the other, the other big thing, and I think it's, you know, it's really, I think become, uh, more mainstream if that's the right word to use, um, these last few years. Uh, and it's perhaps maybe the most important thing of all of this is, you know, when you take time to rediscover your values and, you know, do you check in from time to time of, you know, what is truly important to me? What do I stand for? What do I don't, what do I not stand for? What you're gaining is you're gaining self-awareness. And that is just like an incredible life skill to have, right? And it's self-awareness, like the actual definition of self-awareness is our, our conscious knowledge, of our own character and feeling and motives and desires. So, you know, I think if we're not, if we don't have this pulse on our values, like how do we have a conscious understanding of our own character and feelings? So, um, you know, I, I feel like if, if, if we don't have a pulse on our values, we aren't self-aware and, and I just, there's, there's, I could go on and on about self-awareness, but I, I just think it's, it's not only, um, incredible for ourselves, you know, just understanding ourselves and how we operate. But I think of, you know, it's really important for building relationships with others too. Um, and just, I just think of the state of the U S anyway, and how divided people are. And, um, I just, there's maybe just a lot of lack of self-awareness happening (laughs) where we're not understanding ourselves and therefore not understanding each other very well. I, oh, I completely agree. We have to celebrate this awesome gift of life, right? Honor ourselves and the lives that we have been given by really committing to live an authentic and amazing life and truly live each and every day to the fullest. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, there's this quote that I just, I love so much and Cleo Wade, she's, uh, she's just a very eloquent writer and, and poet. Um, she sums it up really well. She says, devote yourself to love, love yourself so much that you can love others without barriers and without judgment. And I just think that that really kind of sums up everything we've talked about. <laughs> it, it completely does. It completely. And thank you, Julia, so much for joining us today. It has been a great pleasure to have you on. Tell the listeners one more time how they can reach you. Yeah. Thank you, Erica. I really, really appreciate the opportunity to, to have this time with you and, and all your viewers. And if anyone wants to get in contact with me, they can reach me at my website. It's www.julia-amato.com. My email is coach at julia-amato.com. You can also find me on Instagram. My personal account is gracefuljewels. That's J-U-L-E-S. And um, my coaching um, Instagram handle is wholeself.wholecommunity. So lots of ways. (laughs) Wonderful. Thank you again. Just remember, it takes effort to live authentically. We are all works in progress. So strive each day to live 
unconsciously, you will really reap tremendous rewards and blessings as you watch the unfolding of your greatest life. I want to thank you all for tuning in to Get Rooted Radio. If you missed any part of today's episode or you want to listen again, go to GetRootedRadio.com for the podcast. And don't forget to tune in the first and third Mondays of each month at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, and 2 p.m. Pacific right here on Transformation Talk Radio. Before I sign off, remember to ask yourself, am I living a rooted life? One that is balanced mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. If the answer is no, take time to think about what you need to do to make that answer a yes. One way to take action is to set up your free Empower Hour call with me. No charge, no obligations. Go to GetRootedRadio.com to find out how I can help you take action. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have an amazing day. I am looking forward to the next time on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford-Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford-Mills. Living it up, loving it up, and letting it go. Visit GetRootedRadio.com if you have missed any part of this hit show. And tune in on TransformationTalkRadio.com to live fearlessly in your more and powerfully rooted in your unlimited yes. For more information and to work with Erica directly, visit GetRootedRadio.com. That's GetRootedRadio.com and get ready to live it up, love it up, and let it go.